At last, Johnson on the Gregory boat is nearing the Magic Island. But Johnson will arrive at the island as a prisoner and not a rescuer. Jerry and Joan were ordered to go in the Euclidean submarine and aid in the capture of Johnson's boat, while the captain and Mrs. Gregory have seen and heard all that took place in the submarine through the wonderful prism reflectors in G-47's control chambers. The submarine is towing the Johnson boat, which has run out of fuel. They are only a few miles from Euclidia, the magic island. Mrs. Gregory and Captain Bradford are now back on their captive yacht, inside a lock in the submerged island. The alarm gong on the island has been ringing, and Mrs. Gregory and Tex are trying to learn the meaning of the signals. There it is again, Tex. The same signal we heard before. Yes, Pat, but the last time we heard it, it meant to stand by stations. Then they submerged this island. Well? The island's all the way down now. The surface of it is 40 feet below the water level. They can't submerge it anymore. Just the same, there's the signal. Oh, Tex, I'm getting so worried down here in this dark lock. It was better in G-47's control room. At least we could see and hear what was going on. And we knew that Joan and Jerry were all right in that submarine. Jerry and Joan are all right, whether we watch them or not. Is this radio all right now? It works fairly well, but it wouldn't be a good idea for us to try sending with it. I didn't mean that, Tex. Just so it works well enough that we can hear Johnson if he talks to Jerry in the submarine. Poor Johnson. I'll bet his face was a study when that sub picked up his bow anchor with a magnet and started to tow him to this island. Doesn't it seem strange to you that Johnson hasn't sent any message since that? I don't think so. There's nothing for him to send one about. It's just the end of a good try on his part, and he's failed. I imagine he doesn't feel a whole lot like talking to anyone. Tex, four strokes of the alarm gong. That should mean the fourth level. The island's going up again. I think you're right, Pat. That must mean that the battleships are all safely out of the way. Johnson's boat is near enough that they're getting the island out of the water so the submarine can land the captive boat at one of the piers. Then Joan and Jerry will be back with us again. I won't care much what happens if I can only keep them near me all the time. Yes, and once I get Johnson on this island with the materials he has on that boat, it shouldn't take us long to figure a way out of this. But G-47 will take the materials away from you the minute the boat lands. Oh, will you quit worrying so much, Pat? We'll get off this island if it takes a year. Now, just try to take it easy and leave the rest to me. The third level, Tex. We're really going to get up out of this awful dark at last. Looks like it. I hope they let us take the yacht back out into the open water between the piers again. I don't like this living in a hole underwater myself. That's right. G-47 may not want the yacht outside again. I don't think he'll object to that. Doesn't look much like we'd run away with a broken mast and these smashed cabin roofs. And will we be allowed to remain on the yacht? G-47 said we could. He has not room for us to live on the island and no time to build quarters for us. Remember that the aerial is broken. And when the anchor leaves the floor of this steel lock... The radio won't work anymore. Well, just as soon as we get outside in the open air again, I'll fix up an aerial fast enough. Hmm, second level, huh? Things sure move on this island. Only another minute or two and the top of the island will be out of the water. Yes, and if we don't hear from G-47 pretty soon about getting this yacht out of this lock, I'll go and ask him. And that's probably G-47 now. I suppose it is. Come in. Oh, well, Skipper, come in. And close the door. Island. What about the island? Rising. Yes, Skipper, we know. The island will soon be out of the water. Have you heard whether we're to be allowed to take the yacht out of this lot? Yep. We are to be allowed to take it out? Aye. How did you find out this? The first level. Then the steel control chambers on the surface are coming out of the water now. We'll soon be out. Aye. Did G-47 tell you we could take the yacht back out? Yep. Has he been down here on this boat talking to you? Aye. Funny he didn't call on us, isn't it, Tex? Well, uh, he's on the boat now? I... Well, what's he doing here? Looking. Looking at what, Skipper? Anchor. What's he looking at our anchor for? Radio. Oh, of course, Tex. He's figured out that the broken aerial wires mixed up in the anchor chain have given us a good aerial. Yeah, and he's probably doing something to it right now, so it won't be any good. Send him in here, Skipper, will you? I... And don't tell him you've told us he's on board. I... So, the old boy's been sneaking around out there on the deck looking things over. I wouldn't worry too much about that, Tex. He told the skipper we could take the yacht out and anchor it in open water again. Well, I hope it's right away, then. I've got a notion something's going to happen before very long. This will be G-47. Yeah. Come in. 
Oh, G-47. Come in, won't you? Oh, thank you. We've been wondering if you wouldn't pay us a visit before long. The island seems to be rising again, and we'd like to take the yacht back outdoors, if you don't mind. Oh, you will be allowed to take the yacht out again. It will make Mr. Johnson feel more at home to be welcomed by his friends. Yeah, some welcome. One prisoner welcoming another to jail. Never mind that now, Tex. Will Johnson's boat be brought in at Pier 5? Will it lie near us? I think that will be advisable. Then when the time comes for the destruction of these boats, <laughs> it will be simpler if they are in contiguous slips. Destroy them? Steady, Pat. I expected that remark. <laughs> the lock gates are opening now, if you care to listen. Oh, Tex, listen. The gates are open. The water levels and the locks are evening up. Oh, sounds good to me. I've had enough of this dark lock. Tex, look, the portholes. You can see the daylight even back here in this lock. Now, the magnets are beginning to actuate this craft. We will soon be in the outer slip. There's Jerry in the cell. Oh, it's good to hear him again. Uh, silence. We must hear this. Hello, Johnson. Hello. Calling J-12C. What's the matter, Johnson? We have not been able to raise your boat since we started towing you. Have important orders for landing your boat at Euclidia when we cut loose our magnets at the island. Advise, Johnson. There is every possibility his boat will be wrecked on the island. If he does not acknowledge and carry off these special orders. J-12C. Hello, J-12C. This is emergent. Answer at once. Ah, will this transmitter work, Captain? It will if your magnetic ring doesn't stop the beam. It will not. Break hall at once. Try to speak, Johnson. Hurry. The time is precious. Right. Break it, Hall. Break it, Jerry. Bradford on J-24Y calling Johnson on J-12C. Let me have it, Jerry. I will now send from the yacht to Johnson. Special orders. G-47 on board yacht. Let me have it, Jerry. Okay, Tex. Hello to yacht. All okay here. Go ahead, Tex. I can't raise Johnson. Go ahead. Thanks, Jerry. Hello, Johnson. Bradford to J-12C. Hello, J-12C. Something must have happened to Johnson's radio. Uh, you will continue, Captain. All right. J-24Y to Johnson on J-12C. Hello, Johnson. This is important. Can you hear me? Your boat is in danger of being wrecked against a steel artificial island unless you talk to the commander of the submarine who is towing you. Get her instructions before she casts your anchor off her magnetic towing fin. J-12C, calling J-12C. What can be the matter, Dick? Hello, Bradford. Oh. Hello, and you've got me. Oh, Tex, it's all right. Hey, Tex, I got Johnson here. Can you hear him? Yes, I got him, kid. Let me have the channel now. Hello, Johnson. Getting you fine. What happened? No message from you for so long. Sorry, Captain. My set has been dead. Was not advised we would be towed by magnets, and they paralyzed the set. When I heard the word magnet very faintly, I set about making a crude shield for the set. Okay, now. What's the order? Uh, tell him to take his orders from the commander of the submarine. Hello, Jerry. J-24Y to Jerry Hall on submarine. Hello, sub. Okay, Tex. Go ahead. G-47 authorizes me to tell you commander of sub is to give orders directly to Johnson. That old G-47? Have the commander advise me speed and distance from island. Commander, Bradford to S-1. Yes. Will you give orders to Johnson, then report to G-47 on your position and speed? Very good. S-1 to Johnson. S-1 calling J-12C. Go ahead, S-1. Johnson on J-12C. Ready, S-1. Go ahead. We are 15 knots from Ireland. Stand by when within one knot of Ireland. I will cut magnets off. You will be re released directly opposite opening into slip you are to use. 
Have you auxiliary power on board to take yourself in? Last few hundred yards. Reply. Johnson, their submarine commander, has a small electric motor. Should be good for two miles or more, uncharged, now in batteries. What about this island slip? I've received some wild messages, supposedly from there. Is island surrounded by fog ring? Will I need pilot? No, your power will be clear. That is all, John. G-47. Commander S-1 to G-47. Proceed, Commander. Making 10 knots. Position due north of island. 28 degrees, 45 minutes south. Should be at Pier 5 in 90 minutes. Order. Uh, no orders. Proceed as you are. Your instructions to Johnson, excellent. That is all. Very good. Just an hour and a half and Johnson will be here. I'm glad to see him even if he can't help us. I'll be more than glad to get Jerry and Joan out of that submarine. Oh, that'll help a lot. You may expect me again when the boat is near. <laughs> you may now use your radio as much as you care to. Tex, look, that sunshine. Let's go out on deck. Right, dear, come on. A little daylight won't do me any harm. Oh, oh this is glorious. I've never appreciated the light as I do this minute. Hmm. Shows up that broken mast and the shattered cabin pretty badly, though. Say, that little pigeon was in his coat when the mast fell. Oh, I wonder if he's hurt. We'll know in a minute. Pat, come here. Look in the coat, quick. Oh, Tex, the little bird isn't hurt, is it? No, but Pat, look. Tex, another pigeon in there with a message tied to him. He must have arrived the instant the yacht came out. Yes, and that's one of the pigeons from Johnson's boot. We've still got a chance, Pat. There'll be something in that message we can use before Johnson's boat...